Joining us today from Green Coat UK Wind, it's Stephen Lillia. Warm welcome to you, Stephen. How are you? Very good. Nice to see you, actually, rather than being on Zoom. Yeah, in real life. <laughs> in this real is life. a new thing. It and we're is. back in action. Good. Um, okay, we're talking about your full year and mm. results that ended mm. on the 31st of December 2021. Um, all looks good. Maybe just take us through the highlights, then we'll dig into the detail. Yeah, so we produced about three terawatt hours of power in 2021. Um, that was down because of uh, wind resource largely. Uh, cash generation was, was super good. Uh, we had uh, uh, high power pricing throughout the year. So if you compared last year's power pricing, £120 a megawatt hour versus about 35 from 2020. Mm -hmm. um, and so, so cash generation delivered a dividend cover about 1.9 times. So really well covered. And uh, we paid £138.8 uh, pounds of cash dividend and uh, accrued 148 in the year. So a high dividend cover. Uh, largely, you know, the sum of, of, of slightly below budget production, but uh, uh, substantial power pricing. And actually coming into the beginning part of this year, January and February has been good production. Um, where you get named storms, we generally produce a lot of power. So as we got through to G so far, yes. um, we produce very well. Um, no damage in the portfolio. Funnily enough, wind turbines are designed for wind. And uh, so we've been producing a lot through the last few months, uh, the last couple of months, and, and uh, been well paid for it. I'm sure you have. Uh, let's talk about investing because yeah. you've done a lot of that, Stephen. Yeah. So we bought um, six or seven, um, depending on how you look at it, uh, wind farms throughout the year. Mm -hmm. um, a, a range of, of, of uh, uh, projects under the renewable obligation regime, um, also some three subsidy free projects that one we finished construction of and two we bought when they were commissioned. We also bought into uh, a big CFD project, uh, Burbo Bank Extension, towards the back end of the year. Mm -hmm. So in total, we did £570 million worth of investing, and we did uh, that added 249 megawatts onto the portfolio. Mm -hmm. So as we stand, we are somewhere between 5 and 6% of the UK wind market in terms of capacity, value, etc. Um, and we um, generate about 1% of UK electricity. So a sizable, sizable fleet now. Indeed. And how important is inflation to your performance? Yeah, so we have promised nine years ago at listing that, and we designed the business such that we could always increase the dividend by RPI. And so when RPI number for December came through at 7.5% um, on and around uh, January 18th, I think, uh, it was a mechanical increase of our dividend. And because the dividend covers so high by design, uh, you know, we can always do that. So uh, the dividend went from 7.18p to 7.72p. That's just the mechanic of, 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 of RPI coming onto that. I think our investors are keen um, to, to have that inflation exposure in the business. So, you know, we could go and hedge some of that if we wanted to, but actually they want that. Um, so, so we haven't done that and we won't do that. So inflation, I think, is, is, is pretty important for us. Um, the other thing that, that, that investors want is the exposure to the power price. I think we've talked a bit about that. Yeah. Uh, and because we, are, we, we sort of structured the company quite conservatively, if, if you like, the last few years have been, have been a bit about resilience, so we've coped with slightly lower production or slightly lower power pricing. But because of that conservative structure we get into this year, um, and we can cope with the, you know, the, the twin themes, if you like, of inflation and, and power pricing, and deliver the product and, and start to differentiate away from, our, from some of our peers. Mm -hmm. So inflation, you know, we do... Um, have that sort of almost one-to-one -one exposure to, and people like that, and they'll buy the stock for that, I think, but also for the power price as well. Mm -hmm. Let's talk about ESG. Yeah, um, so I, I think for the first year we have become a bit more mechanical in the reporting. I think we we have to do that for, for because we're a list on the stock market. Um, the, the you know the, the the TCFD type reporting that we have to do. So we we are reporting under that. Um, so we've got uh, in our annual report the scope 1, 2 and 3 emissions for the first time. We've got various scenario analysis for the first time. Um, I think the scope 3 emissions really needs to develop to be meaningful. Um, we've reported what they are this year. The problem with scope 3 is, is how it's defined is that you, 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 in the year that you buy something you have to account for all the construction carbon and all of the asset life carbon which is really a bit stupid uh, and it's really a bit meaning, meaningless and hopefully the industry will develop such that you can do it on a per year basis and it made much more sense so you can comparing the, the amount of carbon in construction versus the amount you avoid in the year which for us is about 1.7 million tonnes okay. and so if you're doing a more direct comparison that would be quite helpful so hopefully the industry will develop to do that. Um, the other things that we, that we uh, uh, report start, start to report under things like the, you know, the UN SDGs, the uh, 
sustainable development goals, we've, we, two of those are particularly relevant to us, the, 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 ele the electricity and the carbon, uh, the climate change effectively, but there's a whole lot of stuff that we do uh, in our community funding, the three million pounds of community funding that we do every year that hit about ten of them. So I think those are sort of key themes for us and UNPRI and um, <coughs> SFDR, all those other initialisms that we have to mm -hmm. sort of report under. So I think for us, gone are the days of we're a wind farm business, what's not to like about that in your portfolio to all the sort of key metrics that hopefully in due course will develop such that they're understandable and actually from a 100,000 foot level they will, in they will engender change, which mm -hmm. I think is important. Mm -hmm. And just finally, let's get yeah. your commentary on the energy market in general. Yeah, so for us, we uh, are exposed to, to, to the power price, um, and, and we, <coughs> you know, sort of value that. I think in the long term, uh, if you think of sort of build out, uh, uh, you know, the, the two th the two things that I think is certainly into the long long term that the government needs to do is it needs to work out um, grid. So the grid is really important for a whole range of different reasons. The capacity on the system, offshore capacity, northern northern probably northern Scottish onshore capacity that will be required for the targets that we need in 2050. I think there's, there's a huge sort of important, but even for things like electric vehicles as well, that's yeah. kind of important for us. Um, uh, I think the, 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 the other thing that will be really relevant uh, in the long term is hydrogen. So I mean this is, and the government needs to work out how to get that in scale uh, yeah. for fuel but also for, for electrolysis. And I think once you've done that, you can see a lot of wind coming onto the system because it will be capable of coping with it. Mm -hmm. you know, the grid and, and, and hydrogen are the key mm -hmm. things for the government to co concentrate on. For us, we'll see, I think, a lot of opportunities um, for as, as, as companies recycle capital for new uh, on, on, on and offshore development, actually, mm -hmm. and, and for us to buy into the secondary market as, as those assets come into operation. All right, Stephen Lilly, thank you very much indeed for coming into our Proactive Investors studio here in the British capital.